This is a 2023 FHSAA Girls Soccer Finals. The Boca Raton Bobcats at 13 and 2 taking on the Bartram Trail Bears. What's your name, your position, and your number? My name is Ava Cooker. My position is left wing and forward. Um, and my number is number three. My name is Daniela Fajardo. I'm number 16 and I play center back and left back. My name is Emily Shigoda. I'm number 20 and my position is center mid. My name is Emma Kate Lee. My position is center back and my number is 11. My name is Haley Walls. I'm number 22 and I play left wing. My name is Kelly White. I'm a goalkeeper and I'm number two. I'm Kylie Owens. Um, my number is 12 and I play right back. My name is Lula Reed. My number is seven and I'm an outside defense. My name is Leo Ortiz, forward, and my number is 19. Uh, my name is Lily Muir. Uh, my number is eight and I play as a left back. My name is Marina. I'm number 10 and I play forward. I'm Nina Fernandez. I play outside mid and I'm number six. I'm Olivia Martinez. I'm number seven and I'm defensive mid. Sara Coelho. Left wing, and my number is 13. Hi, my name is Sofia Melendez. I play defense, and my number is 17. I'm Vanessa Straub, number, whoa, number 15, and I play attacking center mid. I'm Coach Sam, or Samantha Hernandez. When I went here, Samantha Major. Um, you'll hear Roby call me that every once in a while and uh, I am the assistant girls varsity coach. My name is Rob Sweeten, and I am the trainer of the goalies, which we only have one, so goalie. My name's Lane, I'm a forward, and I'm number 15, or no, I'm five. I always say that you did. You did every that time. Much. I'm Madison Volanti, I play center mid and center back, and my number's 23. I'm Rachel Grimes, I'm the head coach of the girls soccer program here at Boca Raton High School. Tell me a little bit about the history of Bobcat soccer. Ask her, you have to ask her about her parking job. Yes, yes, you have to ask her. You have to talk about her parking. She cannot park, like, at all. I'm a good parker. They judge me for no reason. Yeah, I heard about that. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so when we had, like, our team party, I drove in. And there was like this whole thing of bushes and stuff. So I was like, I'm not gonna drive over the bushes. Yeah. So I just parked in the road. And they all blamed me for that, but there was enough room to get by. So it was in a neighborhood, it was small. In the road. Well, it was like on the one side of the lane. I was just blocking a lane, that was it. Oh, you were blocking an entire lane in the neighborhood. It wasn't bad though. It wasn't bad. No one drives there. No so. one home, okay. All right. It was fine. All right, yeah. yeah. I, heard, I heard you had uh, you had a game one time and you parked. I made my own parking spot. But, yeah. yeah. So that's number two. So yeah. The second time, it was the field, the hard whole parking lot was on the other side. Yeah. But I didn't feel like going all the way over there, so there was just like a little bit of concrete area. I just parked there. Yeah. It worked. Honestly, so like, I was, you were the best parker in the world. I am. I made my own spot, and I was the first one there. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, it was so the shortest good. walk. You're, you're probably the first and the last one there. Yeah. That's how good, like, that's exactly. How good that's how good I am. Yeah. Me and Kelly decided to go paddleboarding together. This we is tried loud, to. This is a loud one, right? Yes, okay. Kelly's a loud one. Okay. Um, we tried to get up on the board. It took us about, I'd say, 10, 15 minutes um, because one of us would get on, the other tried to get on, then we'd both fall off. <laughs> and that happened a good 10 times. So we finally got on the board and we're heading towards the island. It took us a long time to get to the island, <laughs> but then we're on our way back. <laughs> we were not moving. We were going against the current, really weren't getting anywhere. So then I tried getting off the board, tried pushing her while she was sitting on the board. That didn't work. So then we called Emily over, who was on a kayak, tried doing like a push and pull kind of thing. That didn't work. So then we see Towboat USA come by. So I decided to scream, help! And they were like, thought we were joking. And they were like, do you actually need help? And then Kelly's like, no! I was like, Kelly, we need help. But then officially we were just, 
we're determined, determined to get back to the house, so push through that. Just like our soccer games, yeah. how in the state semifinal, we were had 19 seconds left, we were gonna lose. Maddie was determined to shoot that ball, ran to the goal, and it happened, and yeah. So Bessie is Coach Rach's vacation house in the Keys. It is unlimited fun 24-7 and a lot of the reason why we are close it's a lot of bonding a lot of team exposure a lot of deep you know like um getting to know one one another Bessie we all went to Bessie did a whole bunch of like team bonding activity place in the keys Coach H has a house there and we all go down there. Bessie was so much fun. Like they were telling me before, like like Kelly was telling me, like if you're not already excited, like you think your expectations are too high, they're not high enough. And, and she was right. Like it was really fun being able to be a team and then a family and friends so close. Having a bunch of girls forced un under one roof, it was just like being able to like get to know each other. Like so you're not really with your friends of the team, which is a good thing. And I just really think that Everything we do there is just so fun and chill and kind of just in the sun and having a good time, but it really helps everyone get to know each other better. And I feel like after that, and after just like those two days, everyone kind of just, we became, instead of friends, we became family. What's one word that you would use to describe your team? Passionate. Family. That resilient because, I mean, from the start of the year to where we are now, like going with the team, like I've never ever experienced such growth as a team. Dependable, I think our team is very uh, dependable on each other, like if, uh, whether it's on the field or not on the field, especially on the field, if someone misses a tackle or misses a header, there's always someone behind them backing them up. Persistent. Powerful. Family. Passionate. You know, we're more than just like a soccer team, we're really just a family, we're all so close. I'd say like dedicated. Hard working, and I think because no matter, like the team last year we lost like 11 seniors, and this year we kept working hard to get to where we are today, which is the state finals, so. And that's incredible. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand. It's insane. Who's the most vocal on the team? Definitely Sophie Lendez. I always, normally like on the field, I don't really hear anything, but the only like two voices I really hear are Coach Rach and Soph. I always hear Soph just like, yelling and like giving off like just words of encouragement and I'll always hear her on the field. From my perspective probably Kelly because that's like the person I hear the most because she stands right behind me so all I hear is just her screaming. It's so because she always is cheering and always hyping us up no matter what we do like <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly our goalkeeper. Not like on the field but I think just as a person she like for everyone, I think, I, I think everyone would probably say this, like, she's just always like, cracking jokes, making everyone, you know, laugh, and um, just a big part of our team, even on the field. She's so, she's always like really supportive and um, cheering everybody on. Emma Kate, she uh, makes sure our team's always like organized together. Kelly, um, I just naturally, she's the goalie, so she tells us like, how to mark and she's and then off the field she's just like she's a happy person loud person so she's always keeping us hyped up. Kelly because because her being the goalie it feels like you kind of have to be the most vocal because she's kind of like a director I guess you could say. So on the bench her her yelling at us to cheer and be louder and all that. Sarah she doesn't stop talking <laughs> but everything she says is the funniest thing ever. Maddie I feel like when I'm playing, I can always hear her like telling us, supporting us, telling us to do everything. It just shows how she's a good leader. Probably Emma Kate because the way she plays, not only because she's yes, she is vocal, but like the way she plays, she's very dominant, and you know everyone kind of like works off of that. Like, yes. So in the beginning of the season, it's kind of a whole new team, so we really didn't know what to expect. And our first game was against Douglas, our preseason game and we lost three to zero, I believe. So kind of that, like kind of slap in the face was really kind of a wake up call. I was like, all right, well, this is not gonna be the season we had last year. I was a little upset about it, but I kind of had to get over that fact and kind of just be like, all right, this is a new team. We have to start new, even though, even if it might take us longer, it's kind of just what it's all about, just the process. 
So I uh, first was exposed to Bobcat soccer in 1994, 93-94 uh, school year as a freshman here at Boca, Boca High. And um, throughout my career here um, from 94 to 97, I m had some great memories, met some of my best friends who I still communicate with. Um, and um, it really had, had a great coach and just a great experience of being on a team with my best friends for four years. That first year of when I went to varsity, it was definitely a different experience. Like it felt, it was just really impactful for me as a player. And Coach Rach, as a coach, she really helped me like find myself in a way. We've been super successful regionals and state finalists. Uh, very, very successful overall. So, you know, I'm coming in thinking like, yeah, here we go, back at it. And um, then I find out, you know, we graduated almost 10 seniors. I think it might have been 10 seniors. And it was like, okay, um, how's this going to be? This sounds a lot like, you know, years ago when we weren't going to regionals and states. And uh, I remember at tryouts, we didn't know what we were walking into. You know, there was a little bit of just like question marks. What is this going to be like? And, you know, right away, it was that mentality of we are, it's a process. We are building a team. We are creating the culture on and off the field that allows these girls to succeed. And whether it's this year or next year, it doesn't really matter. They've worked for years just to be uh, a strong group together. And then as Rachel has come in, she has done an amazing job getting the girls to uh, get along with each other and get to know each other and become more than teammates, uh, become friends. Coach Rach yelled at you, said, Ava, slow down. What was going through your head? Um, when she said that, I was just you thinking, remember, remember yeah, I remember it. She was like, be calm, take your time. And I just knew like, I just had to relax and just picture where I wanted to go. And I was like, we need this. So then I just kicked it and it went exactly where I wanted it to go. Whenever like something big is about to happen, like a corner or a free kick or a PK, we all go down and we touch the grass. And it's like, good luck. And what are the odds? Like, when you touch grass, what are the odds? Like, it's 100%. It's pretty high. It's up there. I just remember turning to coach and I was like, should I shoot it? <laughs> because like, I could have crossed it in, but I was like, it's like should, I just, should I just put it up there? And she was like, yeah. Like, yeah, aim for the back post. And I was like, all right. And then I just, you know, went up and took it. There wasn't much, I don't think there was much else thought process in that. And then I walked out, not gonna lie. It felt like I had to walk a mile to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I grabbed the ball, I placed it down, and then I definitely, I placed it in the wrong spot. So then I had to pick it back up and place it another time. So then when I stood back, I didn't want to look at the spot I go to because I normally go bottom left, but I had a gut feeling that the goalie was going to kind of go to the floor. So I just backed up, stared at the ball. I just hit it. <laughs> no placement, I just hit it. Congrats on making it to states. It's time to give it all you've got and leave it all on the field. Bobcats on three. One, two, three. Go Bobcats! Congratulations, yeah! Lady Bobcats on making it to state finals. Good luck. Special good luck to number 13. That's the number I wore in 96-97 state final championship. You got this, girls. Let's go! Hey guys, it's Ali. Good luck in the state finals on Friday. I believe in you all. Just one more game. I know you guys got this. Go Bobcats. Hey guys, just wanted to say good luck and go Bobcats. I'm so proud of all of you and everything you've accomplished this season. 
and just go play your game. You're amazing. You guys got this. Hey, Bobcats, and Gia Money here, and congratulations on making it to state. You guys are gonna do great. Let's go! Hi, guys. I'm so proud of you and everything we've done this season. I can't wait to watch you bring home the trophy tonight. I'm your biggest fan. Go, Bobcats! Hey, ladies, sending some good luck wishes from Boston. Go, Bobcats! State finals tomorrow in the land. We are surprising the girls with a send off. Let's go, Bobcats! So excited for you! Woo! Come home from school usually. Take a quick nap. Hopefully. <laughs> Hop in the shower, you know, get all ready, put my clothes on. Then I go downstairs. Pasta is made. She's missing a part. She actually likes to do homework. No. Oh, you Can't do, forget the SAT. You do homework on game oh, of course. Always. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyways. So then I do pasta. Pasta with red sauce. Then I get in the car and this comes on. Why not butter? I don't like butter. <laughs> butter hurts my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened right now? What's the song called? Down on me! Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hold on though, I think, I think this better not be in any video. Go. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, no, this will never be anywhere. Okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that like, be ourselves, be who you are, and realize that there's there's no pressure you know tomorrow morning when you wake up whether you're extremely happy or a little disappointed you're gonna be the same person you are pizza pizza oh. pizza pizza Woo. salad Woo. no pasta pizza, I guess. pizza yeah yeah what happened no pasta that? boo no this is what happened we ate so late that my tummy was already full so. and you don't eat butter before the game no no butter no butter I never, I never eat butter. It's because you're lactose intolerant. I actually used to be, so yeah. And gluten intolerant. From Speck Martin Stadium in DeLand on the campus of Stetson University. This is the 2023 FHSAA Girls Soccer Finals. And we finish it off with the 7A Championship. The Boca Raton Bobcats at 13-2 taking on the Bartram Trail Bears. Never give up. I think never, never underestimate yourselves because at, at, in the beginning of the season, I will admit, like, I did. You know, I didn't think that we would come this far and I thought, you know, I didn't know what the season would look like. But I think never underestimate yourselves because this team has passion and we have grit and we are very resilient. And I think that you're never guaranteed anything in a game. Whether you're the underdogs or whether you think you're going to win the game, you're never guaranteed to win and you're never guaranteed to lose. Be respectful and be confident, but don't be cocky because there's a big difference. And enjoy it while you can because I still feel like I'm a freshman. So. <laughs> um, I would say to stay grounded, um, to, to not allow yourself to get caught up in what you did do, but to know that there is a goal to grow and to continue to grow and progress. And what we did to get where we got was to focus on the little day-to-day -day tasks, to always be present. That was a big focus, to always be present. So I encourage them to carry that into their summer training, to carry that into next year, to come in being like, we haven't done it yet. We have work to get done. And how can we improve? How can we grow individually and then as a team? And just know that, you know, it's a long road ahead, um, but it's going to be a really beautiful process and to buy into that now. It's a great season. Um, so many great memories, you know, I, the state semifinal way to win that game. I don't think we'll ever see as, as such a dramatic win again. I mean, to win in the last 
18 seconds. Um, and those two weeks of the state semi and the state final, I think, was not only great for our team, but also the families, you know, them going on the bus together and um, tailgating and just being, the parents being together on the way there and the way back. I think it was just a special, a special run and um, glad to be a part of it. You have two seniors on the team. What do you want to say to those two seniors? Oh, man. Well, first of all, it's going to be, they're going to be missed. Um, I just, I, I wish them well. I hope that the lessons and the experiences they took from that, from this program um, carry forward into whatever they do in college. I know Maddie's going to be playing in college and I hope that when, you know, the college environment gets rough or the college environment is either successful or trying, that she just remembers all of the, the values and roles and like good skills on and off the soccer field that she learned here at Bobcat Soccer and I hope that they really carry her through and I think that they will. I think I hope that she knows that she is very well prepared for that competitive environment because of what she got here with Bobcat Soccer. Awesome. Yeah. And for Soph, um, Soph had a really difficult road and I just want to encourage Soph that um, you know she might not have gotten the year she wanted because of the injury, but she's gonna have so many cool opportunities and so many awesome high peak experiences that are gonna mirror and match what we had in regionals, but she will be able to be a part of them and just to not lose sight of that. So every year, take advantage of every opportunity you have and enjoy it. I love it when I get a team of new girls and figuring out personalities and, and where they're gonna fit in best. Um, so, Every team is special. I, I can never put one team over another. Um, but this team in particular, when I knew that we could have a, a good year, was the very first real game of the season. Um, we had had, you know, practice, and every practice had gotten a little bit better. And I noticed early on that anything that I did in practice, they first of all were very eager to learn and what my expectations would be, you know, with whatever we were doing. But then they would also execute it. Um, but the first preseason game, um, we lost to Douglas and we did not look very good. And that was fine, it was early and that was okay. Um, but the next, our very first game was against West Boca, who has a very good team, a very good striker, a team that can score a lot of goals. And we came out in that game and we were winning 2 nothing. And I was like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good about you know where we are and this is a good team and you know, we're scoring some nice goals. But then West Boca came back to tie it 2-2. And I remember looking at Sam and saying, um, all right, well, let's see what this team is all about. And after we, the other team came back and tied it, we rattled off three goals in a row in the next you know, five minutes to win 5-2. And just, at that, at that, just to have that first game like that, I was like, well, we have a team of fighters and a team of girls that are never gonna give up. And I think it set the tone for the entire year. Uh, you know what, well, we could have easily tied or maybe given up another one or maybe been like, you know, feeling bad for ourselves or maybe we aren't going to be that good. You know, all those thoughts could have gone through our head, but it was the opposite. And after that game, I'm like, we can, if we have that energy and that drive, the soccer is going to come. We're going to get better. Like these girls all play year round. They're good, they're good players, but you can't teach the hustle and the intensity and, and the desire.